one made me think that this is gonna be some goofy fun show and then episode two just hit me in the face with trauma it's like where is this coming from i don't even know what kind of show this is gonna be i thought it's gonna be goofy fun times with people with in you know uh, flawed powers but it's like yeah so this is what happens when um people don't go to the star ocean academy before back in the day uh basically we'll take you and we'll experiment on you we'll break you then send you to the mental ward you're done the brother is just completely insane. The mom sold the kids out. L fucking mom. And I'm starting to realize like, shit, this show is going to tackle some really uh, disturbing, you know, elements of whenever you have superpowers in the modern world. And what was the government going to do when they discover, right? That's why it's so important to have Star Academy, a Star Ocean. It's, that, that's why our main character being exposed to these things. I think he's gonna become a lot more mature and level-headed because so far in episode one, he's a complete fucking asshole, right? Like, let, let's get serious. He's an absolute douchebag. He's not taking this seriously at all. But after that moment of going to the mental ward and you know seeing her brother, maybe he's gonna take it a little bit more seriously and think about what could potentially happen to him, his little sister, and also that begs the question: There's this some sub, there, there, there's a special person that was helping her out, right? There's a special person that wasn't really declared, but apparently helped her, you know, establish Star Ocean or some shit. I forget. Does it have to do with the missing brother? Probably not. Let's begin today's reaction, though. Bitch, don't even fucking lie to me. You are not giving the excuse of you overslept so you can only make omelet rice with the same goddamn pizza sauce. You make this shit every fucking day, even if you had time. I love her, though. She's great. She's great. What? We're gonna, we're gonna fucking rely on Takago to get us some fucking sandwiches? Just risking everyone's life in the cafeteria. Every time he does that, the entire fucking cafeteria needs a fucking renovation because it's an earthquake. <laughs> this is so funny. It, the dynamic here is like, you know, it's like, Mom, I don't want your lunch bento anymore. You know, I can't hang out with the cool kids in the cafeteria. <laughs> but it's like a little sister making it. I, I don't know. It's, it's pretty funny. Also, our mom. Where the fuck is she? Parents. Am I forgetting some details? Parents. Parents. Do we know of our parents? Were they even talked about yet? She just fucking left. Was she the L mom? No, no, no. The, uh, the, the, the other girl's mom was the L mom. Our mom is just... Am I a dad? What about the dad? We just know nothing about that, do we? We have an uncle? We have an uncle. Right? Yeah. <laughs> he is actually so lucky to have a sister like that. Have a nice day! I guess, I don't know. When you're like a kid in high school and you see stuff like this made with love and, and you're trying to be cool and fit in with all the popular kids. Yeah, maybe you would think like this. I probably did too when I was in high school. But then when you grow up, you're going to realize that shit. I can't believe I treated them with such disrespect. I can't believe I cared about the opinions of these random fucking random high school kids that I'm probably never going to talk to. And I just like shit on my mom or somebody that loved me enough to prepare something like that, man. You just can't appreciate it in the moment because you're just too caught up in teenage drama. <laughs> I hope you have a terrible day, bro. Fuck you. You, you fucking... You, really? Just because of the message now? Fuck you. I hope you have a terrible day in today's episode. This is his cool, edgy fucking persona. I actually love this character, man. But like, the sandwiches you grab is RNG, then again, if every sandwich is curry, beef tongue, then like, it's fine, I guess. But like, if it's only limited, like, are you sure you can pick the right ones? <laughs> <laughs> every time he moves, the entire fucking school has an earthquake. <laughs> Bro, your head, your head. Oh, it's not sandwich today. Sorry, it's actually just like curry beef tongue. Like, okay. Two underneath, right? <laughs> the blood just disappears. I think the argument, uh, the, the reasoning is like, dude, how the fuck is he not getting damaged? Like, he has some kind of like special suit. So like, his overall body like doesn't get damaged. But his head though, there's like no helmet. He should be wearing a helmet. Every, yes. He should always be wearing a fucking helmet. I think that would be hilarious if he's just walking around with a helmet and just like in, in broad daylight. It's like, why the fuck does he wear a helmet? <laughs> Because <laughs> our little sister. 
<laughs> she would never be able to, you know, you know, make a curry like this. She just puts the fucking goddamn pizza sauce and it just becomes all sugary. Yeah, that's right. Curry has to be spicy, I agree. I don't know if he likes curry as much or it's just like, oh my god, finally a new flavor that isn't the goddamn sweet pizza flavor. No. Hi. Oh! The Giga Chad. That just like walks in silently, dripping. Drips of water, <laughs> says the psychic power, leaves. That's it. That's his entire role throughout the season. <laughs> this is actually gonna be my favorite character. This guy actually might be my favorite character. <laughs> With his clothes on, he needs to be wet. <laughs> Dude, even the voice acting is like so deep and epic and like echo. <laughs> and then he just walks away, <laughs> channeling. Nah, it's gonna be some bullshit where it's just like you can talk with the dead, but they must be dead within the like the last five minutes, and you can only talk for like ten seconds or some shit, bro. No shot, it's gonna be that flexible. <laughs> That's kind of dangerous. <laughs> I love this guy. I, I I love this guy. The collaborator, bro. This guy is a giga chat. I hope every episode he does this, he just walks in. <laughs> no ryok. Is that something? <laughs> walks out. Does not explain. Unemployed. No school. Some shady shit happening in the back alley. Hi. Hmm? I don't think kids should be around here, man. Scary back alley. What is okay, Sherlock. Her deduction skills based off of the environment is crazy. She's kind of insane for just being able to conclude that. Some girl being chased? Uh oh! Maybe I would. Idol girl. We saw her. Uh, her little sister loves the idol. Uh, she was also one of the, uh, what's it called, silhouettes seen in the intermission scene. And I think in the poster, actually, she's even there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's gonna be, like, the next core member. Nishimori Yusa. Wait, wait, wait. I mean, like, but also Takajo, too. <laughs> you a huge fan? Okay. <laughs> Bro definitely does the whole, you know, the glow stick idol dance, you know, the fucking. What the fuck? How do you know all this? So sad. Pretty much. Nishimori Yusa. Cyrex Productions. Someone peeked there. Someone peeked there. What was that head? Oh! <laughs> what the fuck? Why did they do that like that? What the fuck? The camera was just crazy and then. Oh, he fa obviously feels everything. Oh, that's a... Oh, this is a terrible combo. This is a very effective combo, but at the same time, this is a fucking terrible combo. Everyone just gets damaged, you know? Takojo gets damaged from doing this shit. We get damaged from possessing him. What a fucked up combo. <laughs> what would happen if you possess somebody and you commit a suicide? You just jumped off of a bridge. Would he die too? No, I bet the consciousness was just returned. Wonder how, what, how, you know, this, this power is actually fucking insane. Like, you could technically, like, kill yourself, but <laughs> it's the only plan we have, sorry. <laughs> Can't believe you got hit like that. You didn't care about getting hit? Chase after some girl, the idol. What are these high school students, bro? They're built different. They got the resolve to kill. Competitor? Oh, how nice. 
I think now I should fucking hit him once with the fucking back fist, bro. Just hit him like the same time. So a competitor TB, if they 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 probably don't run, you know, they're probably like the uh the rivals. I don't know what the TB stations are, but like if she's an idol and a competitor TB channels there together, it's probably in their best interest to kill her so that their idols can shine. Who is this dude? Are you the pirate? <laughs> oh! What the? Dude, the random violence in this show is crazy. The, the, the random violence in this show, it just comes out of nowhere. どうやってあの男を倒した特殊な力でそれはおそらく西森さんが私たちであればその子を助けられるかとは。あいつと同じ力を持ってること。同じではありません。信じていただけましたか? <笑> ゲクラブだ。こっちだ。ノロノロすんな。戻った。ああ。戻った。確かにあの時テレビで見た女。He's on his knees. He's going like this right now. Takazu actually is one of the funniest characters in the show. Mi-sa-to-onaji. Okay, red hair dude has no powers though. Misa and Yusa, what? Separate entity? Really? I think that we can beat you. Like, what, you got special powers too? Do something stupid then. <laughs> she calls herself Yusarin. I guess that's kind of cringe, right? Because it's like... Like it's it's like a idol nickname, right? It's like what the fans kind of call you. It's like ooh, 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 you know, and then she's like kind of embracing it, kind of leaning into it because she's so content brained. I, I don't know. Misa. <laughs> He's just a fucking sandbag to the random violence in this show. Black feathers isn't very idol-like. I think that's a fucking sick name, but I guess the image that you're trying to portray is like a bubbly, positive girl. I think black feathers is a fucking sick. <laughs> that's now is all over. I can't get a grasp on Nao's personality. She is just fucking everywhere. Sometimes she's so sassy, she like doesn't give a fuck when she gets hit, but the camera can't be damaged, you know? She's just so hostile sometimes, she's so understand, she's so mature about her brother being in the mental psych ward, and she keeps a cool face. Like, her personality, like, I cannot understand, because it's, it's very complex, her character, you know what I mean? Narcolepsy. That must be related to her powers. Does this have to do with channeling the dead? No. Narcolepsy. Falling asleep, waking up in completely different place. Sleepwalking? Multiple personalities. Every time she channels, this must be the consequence of the channeling power that she just has multiple personalities because she wakes up. I don't know. It's gotta be with the power. Sussy. Yeah, it's channeling, okay. So Misa might be a dead person and trying to talk to her by having, you know, Musarin kind of take over her body and every time she wakes up somewhere different, that's basically because someone else possessed her and she forgot about him, which she thinks is narcolepsy and personality disorder. Oh! Older sister? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's the older sister? This, this is the older sister channeling right now. I think so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her first time just chased immediately. Did she went from uwu to be like, yo, fucking monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> so she could hear that the entire time? <laughs> right? That implies that Misa heard the entire conversation while, you know, Yusarin was, you know, taking over as the main persona. <laughs> Get Moe, man. This is great. It's two and one! She is pyrokinesis and, you know, a channeling. The big sister is fire and Yusarin is channeling. What? What? So, 
This implies that she can take over dead teenage people who has powers and use their powers, right? Because her big sister Misa is dead, but she was pyrokinesis. Now she can channel through her and use her own power. So if there's any other people that's dead that had OP powers, we should be able to channel and get their powers, right? This is fucking stupid. You're going to burn down the building. What are you doing? They're not the marshmallows. Not the marshmallows. Did she actually stop this for the sake of you setting right there? Because she loves the marshmallows, right? She saw the marshmallows being burned and she's like, shit, my little sister's gonna be upset about this. Okay. She can't, it's not on command. The other spirit has to just take over. So that's the, you know, inconvenient thing that's about the imperfect powers here. Yeah, but it's pretty cool how she can swap like that. Street friends. They're like gangsters back in the day. Took the phone. The dirty dealing. She figured it out. So that's why he's doing this. God, these are amateurs. But uh, she doesn't have to do it. We can um, do it for them. And then Kurobane or Misa can, or you, you can just be hidden while we handle it, can we? You, that's arsony. You cannot do that. <laughs> See? Now matches the energy. She does not back down. Is this closer to her true personality? Because she's fucking everywhere. Sometimes she's like that. She's like, you want to fucking fight, motherfucker? And sometimes she's at the train station like, oh, look at this bento set. And she eats in the fucking train. I just... I cannot understand this girl's true personality. It's just... It's so wide-ranging. Very interesting girl. And then she's back to normal immediately. Let's burn down... No, we, uh, she already mentioned that we can't go to jail for that. I'm like, let's burn down the enemy studio. No, 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 no. And you said he's back. <laughs> so what is the difference? So she looks more uwu there, right? So if we look before... The eye color. It's the eye color changes, right? It's like red, purple, and then when you says back, it's like bluish. And then her face is a little bit more like, I don't know, cuter too. <laughs> I don't worry about it. The marshmallows. Wow, how did that work? <laughs> <laughs> His entire reality just shattered. Everything he knows about Yusarin is wrong. Is he just like a mental shock, bro? Like, like the roasted marshmallows is like, why would she? Like, she's so dumb. I don't know. She just goes with it. She's all bubbly. It's like, oh, they're marshmallow roasted now. Okay. <laughs> Dude, this is so <laughs> Dude, something about his head, it just keeps leaking, but it's so fucking easy to leak the fucking blood. And I can't tell if it's like for comedic effect or if it's real. Oh shit! That's our boys! That, yeah, that's our boys! Yo, he didn't even know! The eyes are covered. The eye, it, this is definitely Misa right now. This is Yusa's voice, but I want to believe that it's Misa talking like Yusari. There it is! Fire! Okay, oh, that's why we need the fire resistant clothing. Because if we, like, you know, make it look like their bodyguards are dying of fire, then he gets scared and we can intimidate them. Got it, got it. Does it hurt? I can't tell. It's just acting. Is it just acting? Probably. Imagine the fire resistant clothing didn't actually help and we actually got burnt the fuck up there. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> he deserved this shit. So now it's just like, holy shit, she has these powers too, you know, to control somebody. But like, you know, you taking this shit, I think it's like deserved because he's been such a piece of shit. So now this is like his atonement. His every time he gets used like this, right, and he suffers, it's like, yeah, you deserve this shit for all the stuff that you've done in the past. I don't know. <laughs> Ooh. Speed guy, speed guy, Takaju right there. Okay, everybody's involved right now. This is pretty. Was that a penny shot?
Was that a penny shot? There was no penny shot. I don't think there's been a single penny shot this anime. The fan service in this show is very uh, PG-13. Now we threaten that right? he's never going to make an act on us again. <laughs> Did you just say Nia? That was a cat pun. Maybe I've been listening to too many anime with cat puns lately. Take her to our school. Let's go! Yeah. Bro needs to see last episode. Let's see what, you know, you want to see what happens to her if you get experimented on like her brother. So those like scientists still exist. They still do the experimentation. But somehow Star Ocean Academy has been able to protect the kid. Why? We have some kind of like jurisdiction, some kind of power that overrides what the government or the scientists kind of want. Because they're like enrolled here. They can no longer just take us. I don't know. Yeah, she's dead. That just means you need to find a new teenager with similar powers that could channel Misa once a Yusa has grown up beyond puberty, I guess, or just get over it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna kind of get toxic if you start to linger on to this too much. I loved you! I've always loved you! Rejected. No shot, right? Are these two like love interests? Just friends, right? Did, did, was there anything like romantic involved here? <laughs> so, I've always loved you! <laughs> Rejective. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> no! I, okay, yeah. I, confession! This is the opening theme! Oh! It's beyond the confession! The sister died because of a motorcycle crash that he was a part of. So he felt guilty. That makes a lot more sense. I thought it was just some kind of like, you know, high school teenage crush, you know, drama. But it's like, no, like, bro feels the burden of her death. It's not your fault, buddy. Not your fault. This is hard hitting out of fucking nowhere. Holy shit! Hey, you gotta find a new girl, I'm sorry. <laughs> Very true. Also, like, if, if they were to ever pursue this path, they'd romantically get involved with Misa in this guy's show, right? It's still Yusarin's body. Do you think that Misa would be fine with show fucking his little, you know, her little sister's body while she's possessing? That's like, I, I, I. Man, this little character arc between these characters that I just met today, and all you did was just suffer. Bro did- I, I don't know, he's, it doesn't even feel like he's the main character today, huh? He's just suffering. He's just an asshole, fucking reject, you know, little sister's fucking omurai's, you know, pretty drawing or the lettering, right? <laughs> just, and then he just got fucked up a couple times today. <laughs> he just kind of just on the side, but alright, what's he gonna do now? <laughs> you made her worry! She stayed up till 1.15 a.m.? Damn. The little sister. He doesn't deserve the little sister. I wonder what's underneath the cloth right there. Oh boy, she made that goddamn fucking sweet omurice with the pizza sauce. What is it? What kind of meat sauce? Is it sweet? Yeah, it's sweet. You sudden. Haro haro. Dude, we need to get you sudden and her to meet and interact. Oh man, cause like you know she's gonna come to our school now, but then she's like. It's like separate schools, right? Because we have a high school, Star Ocean Academy. There's like a middle school branch too. Separate buildings. I don't know how that works. Haro haro. Yeah, we met her today, little sis. Yeah? Not really. Kind of. Dude, there's gonna be... We need like a bodyguard or some shit. Like, we need like an entourage around there. Because won't people be like, Holy shit, it's the idol and the surrounder? I hope they meet. <laughs> 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 
kind of want to make this the thumbnail of this episode, but I should I should probably put, you know, you starting as a thumbnail. But like, this is a great one. Holy shit. This is, maybe I'll have a both, you know, one side I'll have her, you know, blood, I don't know, and the other side I'll be you starting. Yeah, I think I'll something like that. <laughs> oh. Little sister carries the show. Little, little sister actually carries the show. And that's today's episode. Today's episode was pretty good. Like the whole character. Okay, first of all, the, 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 the collaborator, bro. The collaborator, I, I, he's actually probably my favorite character. It's like, you guys know how, how I pick my favorite characters, right? I never really like the main character. I care more about like meme supporting side characters than like he of him. Like, bro, just every episode just walks in dripping wet. <laughs> no ryoku. And then walks away. It's like, oh, bro. <laughs> and he just walks away, says nothing, bro. I hope he sticks to that fucking bit. Amazing character. So today's episode was basically I'm um, getting introduced our new character, who is Yusarin, who has a power to channel the dead, meaning Misa can still come back. Misa can still come back, and this also implies that she can take over anybody. It's not just limited to Misa, right? She should be able to channel towards dead people, and it also implies that you can use the dead people's special power. So if you, if there's any teenager, kids that had these powers that died early, we possess them, then we use those powers. Is my understanding. Also, we got to see a little bit more how you know you takes damage whenever he possesses somebody and takes hits, right? It's also so funny how Takaja was like, "Holy shit, the idol that I knew I studied for, and nothing fucking makes sense anymore." Takaja is actually a peak character too. Uh, the whole like. I, these are random characters, right? You know, the red hair dude and the beanie dude. Like, who the fuck are they? But it's out of fucking nowhere. Holy shit. The survivor guilt. The fact that, like, she died during the motorcycle with them. I'm like, whoa. Just came out of fucking nowhere. This show hits on the emotional tones quite well. And the little sister, goaded as usual. Hopefully, she used, uh, she's going to meet Yusari in, like, next episode. And then she's going to get an autograph. And she'll be the biggest simp. I think it'll be very wholesome. Very cute. But that's it from me. If you're still here, if you didn't enjoy this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlists for more content. And until next time, take care.